Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? This is my table saw and it doesn't really have the best dust collection system. It does have uh, a dust collection port just beneath the blade, but a lot of dust still ends up on the floor. So I want to come up with a solution to help improve that. So let's get started. When I was thinking about putting in a dust collector, um, I was worried that if I disassembled my table saw to be able to install it, that I would end up having to realign everything, the motor, the blade, the fence. But that's really not the case because the table saw stand is really independent from the table saw itself. So really, I can unbolt the saw from the stand, lift it off, install the dust collector, put the table saw back on, and I won't have to do any realignment. So there's my table saw stand, and my table saw is temporarily mounted on top of this little uh, workmate, and that'll give me the ability to cut the pieces that I need on the table saw, and then I can attach them over to the stand over here. The first thing I'll do is I'll cut four strips. So I'll cut those first, and then we'll cut the other pieces that will form the box. Now this temporary table saw stand makes the working height a little bit uncomfortable, but it's not too bad and um, we'll be back to normal as soon as we get this assembled. So I'm going to use my crosscut sled to cut four strips two inches wide of the three quarter inch plywood. So now that I've got these pieces uh, just sitting temporarily on the base, one thing I've noticed is that they're sloping down at about a five, maybe six degree angle. I will cut a corresponding angle at the ends here. So instead of being straight up, I'll cut that at a five degree angle to get a better fit. There, and that gives us a much better fit for those pieces. So just be careful that I don't move these while I'm marking the screw holes from underneath. I've marked the drill holes uh, on the backs. I've also marked each of the pieces with the orientation so that when I put them back on the, uh, the table saw base, I'll know where to position them. So I'll drill three eighths holes in those positions. I have a little bit of flexibility because these are actually elliptical um, cutouts on the table saw base. So as long as I get the hole in there somewhere, I'll be fine. So what I'll do now is I'll temporarily install the carriage bolts to hold the pieces in place and then I will glue them and pin them just so that they're a little bit more solid. Apply some glue to the ends. Now just put a little bit of light clamping pressure on it to tighten it up. Now while this is gluing up, um, we'll go ahead and cut the remaining pieces that can form the walls of the dust collection carcass or the, or the box. So let's do some measuring here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to design it for a two and a half inch dust collection system, but I'm going to place this low enough so that in the event that I decide to upgrade to a four inch dust collection system, which I hope to do one day, there will be enough room so that I can remove this, expand the hole a little bit, and then reattach a four inch port. So I'm going to come down 
so that the bottom of the carcass is five inches from this point, more or less. So that brings us up to 13 inches dropping down from the top. So let's measure the interior dimensions of the box. So it's 15 inches from side to side. And from front to back, it's 18 inches. I'm surprised those are right on the inch marks. Um, so let's go to the, the desk, uh, which happens to be my table saw right now, and we'll do some math. To get started, I've pre-drawn what the side is going to look like. The reason I've drawn it like this is because I'd, have, I'd like to have a 30 degree angle here so that the dust slopes back to the back. And so this is the back side. The dust port will be somewhere here. We know this is 15 inches, but most importantly, we know that this length is 18 inches. We know this is 30 degrees. This is 90 degrees by drawing in this dotted line. So that means this has to be 60 degrees. If we want to find this length, this is going back to high school math from, well, a long, long time ago. But if we want to find the length of this, we'll take the tangent, the tangent of 60 degrees, and that will be the same as the ratio of this 18 inches divided by that unknown number. So I'll use my calculator. Uh, 60 degrees, the tangent of that is 1.732. And if I take 18 divided by that, that gives us 10.39 inches. So now I know that the distance from here to here is 10.39. So if I subtract that number from 15, that tells me how much is remaining, which is 4.61. And that means that the front piece over here will be 4.61 inches. So for the sides, I need to cut two pieces. Um, so in order to conserve material, I'm going to cut it out first as one piece. And you can see I've, I've laid out the two pieces. So I've got 18 inches across, 15 inches high if I lay out the first piece this way and then flip it over for the other piece. I've got another five inches for this end, actually 4.61 inches, but I'll cut it five and the same thing over here. So that means the overall dimension will be 20 inches in this direction, 18 inches across. So I'll go ahead and cut that on my sled. By accident, I had the camera turned off while I cut the mitered sides of, of the side pieces. So anyway, those are cut to a nice 60 degree angle, 4.61 inches, more or less, at this end, and 15 inches at this end. So now I'll cut a, a rabbit along the top edge of each of these pieces so that it can fit into the mounting plate that I've already installed on the table saw base. Um, it'll be 3 eighths of an inch deep and 3 quarters of an inch high, and the dado blades will be angled about 5 degrees because of the fact that the mounting plates are angled to fit into the table saw base. Now prior to cutting, I've marked the two pieces because I want to make sure that I cut the, out, the outside edge of each piece. Okay, I've in temporarily installed these two side pieces and I've put them in with drywall screws just to hold them temporarily while I measure to confirm the interior dimension. And it is in fact 14 and a quarter inches all the way along, just as I had expected. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the, the end pieces, the front and the back. Uh, this one will be 15 inches deep, the front one will be uh, 4.61 inches. I'll have to remember to cut that 60 degree angle on the front piece and the back piece. So I've got the side pieces and the end pieces glued in and screwed in where I can. So now the last thing to do is to cut the bottom and to glue it and clamp it in place. All right, everything's assembled. I've got the bottom in and the sides. It's all glued and screwed. What I did at the back 
is I used a Forstner bit multiple times. Uh, it's a two inch Forstner bit to drill a hole. And now I'm going to attach the dust port over that. So here's the dust port. Um, I'm gonna angle it down like this. And I'll try to align the bottom of the dust port, the bottom of the opening of the dust port with the bottom of this hole. So right about there. And I've got some number eight, three quarter inch screws, which will be good. All set, it's ready to be used. We just have to put the saw back on top. So the dust collection box is completely installed inside the base. Now, with the help of my wife, I just need to get the table saw back on top of the base. That's the hardest part of this job. And then we're all done. Would you make it?